Check it out guys, fresh out of the air fryer. Looking pretty good if you ask me. What's up everybody, welcome back to another Palm Circle Pete fishing adventure. On everybody welcome back i'm out here at the california aqueduct searching for some striped bass some striper first off before anything else i just want to say thank you guys so much for helping me get to a thousand subscribers really cool really such an awesome goal to achieve super thankful for all of you guys that being said i looked at some analytics and on my youtube account and only 10 percent of you guys that watch these videos are actually subscribed so take this second right now if you like this video, if you like any of the things that I'm showing you guys about fishing and everything, and just hit the subscribe subscribe button right there. Super easy, and it would help me out a lot. So yeah, we're fishing out here for some striped bass, and I got one rod hooked up right there with chicken liver on a circle hook. It's got some bells. And my second rod right here, I'm drifting with an anchovy. I'll show you this setup and what rod I'm using and all that in a second. But guys, I got a lot of footage that I've shot in the last three weeks that I haven't been able to use because I've been going for salmon like crazy for the last two months. It's just been a struggle. And I've been out to Sacramento probably eight times searching for salmon. And the last time I was out there I was with my buddy Bo. And in the morning we fished for salmon for about two hours. And then we said, nope, we're done. There's nothing, there's no salmon. So we gave up, we gave up. Okay, it's just been a waste of a season, no salmon. Then we're out there fishing for stripers and trout. And I have this trout rod with eight pound test. And I had a little trout swivel with a uh, Duo Realis Pearl Jerkbait. And I threw it out there in the Sacramento River searching for some striper and I hooked up on a king salmon. It was crazy. Uh, and I, I just got to show you the footage. So I'm going to show you some footage of what's been happening with me uh, fishing for salmon for the last two months. And then we'll get back here and we'll catch some striped bass. So check this out. It's pretty epic. It's pretty, pretty crazy. But go ahead, check this footage out and I'll meet you back here and we'll catch some stripers. Guys, I got a fish on. I think it might be a sucker though. Is this a salmon? There's no way this is a salmon. I'm fishing all day out here in Sac. I think it's a sucker by its colors. Not the salmon we are after. It's a big fish. I'm really surprised it went for my uh, flying sea. I've never had a sucker fish go for a flying sea before. This is the uh, Sacramento suckerfish. All right, guys, here we are out in Sacramento. This is gonna be our last um, salmon fishing trip for the season. We have not caught a salmon yet. We're taking out my buddy's Bo's boat out of here, and we're gonna go troll for some king salmon. If we don't get anything in the first hour or two, we're gonna dock up and maybe do some fly fishing, fishing for stripers, for trout, something out here on the American River. We're gonna catch some type of fish today. It's a really cold right now. Usually I just wade in the water with my like shorts or roll up my jeans, but it's 38 degrees right now and the water temperature is 45 degrees. So got some really cool fog on top of the river, but it's uh, pretty chilly out here. So we'll see, we'll see how the day goes. I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna get something, but uh, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And he, my mom tells me, all right guys, well we fished on the American for about three hours. Didn't get any salmon, didn't get any trout. We saw one zombie salmon jump out of the water like three times right there at the power plant or the water plant. And uh, we threw for him, even though probably wouldn't have eaten him because he was so, he was dying, decaying. So now we're heading over to the Sacramento River. Just got here at Discovery Park. Gonna launch and uh, soak some bait for some stripers. Yeah. Come on, GoPro, turn on. Got a fish, guys. Throwing this jerk bait out there. Let's go, dude. Let's go, dude. All day been fishing, nothing. Soaking bait. I'd let him. I'd back it off. Let him take a little bit. Oh no, he's close. There's your split shot. I don't know. what I'm gonna do with that split shot. Hey, is that a salmon? Dude, if it's a salmon, I can reel past the split shot. Just let him. Just let him play. 
Yeah. I don't want to risk anything right here. Bro. Dude, if this is a salmon, oh my gosh. Oh, he's pulling now. I think that's a salmon. No way, dude. No freaking way. I feel like I could get to that split shot and take it here, off. If anything, if anything, let me... Dude, that is a salmon. It's a salmon. Let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> no way. No way, dude. Bring him up. No. <gasps> no way. No way, dude. No freaking way. Oh, oh the on, split hang on, shot. Hang on. You're just spinning the reel. Should I get more drag? See, see if you can bring the tip in. Be careful, he's not pulling. I don't got any tension right now. Let him go, let him go, let him go. I am I'm barely I'm, my okay. fingers were just on. Okay, it. sweet. I could it looks like a salmon. No, it's a salmon. 100 percent no, it's a it salmon. Is, but by the way he was pulling out there. It's eight pound test, dude. No! It broke your line. Oh, dude, it broke your snap. Let me see. Like the one of the least likely spots you grabbed that. Guys, just a lot of lost to salmon. On a jerk bait. On a stripers. jerk bait for stripers. I have eight pound test on my ugly stick, throwing a jerk bait, and I had a little. I had a little swivel on it for a trout, and it broke the swivel. We had it right next to the boat, and we got nervous because there's this split shot right there, and the split shot was like coming up super high against, and we were just, we, we almost could have netted it. I, almost, it was right I saw, there. I saw you had the- uh, I didn't want to come in behind it. And is that it. is. It was not fighting like a salmon at all. It wasn't pulling a lot of drag. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't even turning yet either. It wasn't turning. We had literally called it for salmon this morning. We said no more fishing for salmon. We're done. We've had a terrible year. And then I hook up on one on that jerk bait, and I lost it. I, I, I do feel for you. I'm sorry. It's yeah. just it's emotional at this point. Oh yeah, totally. I got to deal with that. How it's much like money and time you put in. You know, that's really what it is, like what it comes down to. You put in so much time, effort, and money. I mean, especially coming down here and driving. I'm still extremely depressed. I don't know how to describe the emotions I'm feeling, but. So I'm using an ugly stick medium action with, shouldn't be using this much, uh, this heavy test on here. I got 25 pound test to the swivel and then eight pound test from that. And I got my, uh, Crossfire 3000 reel. Got a fish, guys. Got a fish. Striper. Let's go on the anchovy. I thought that was a snag. This looks like a good fish, probably not a keeper. I don't know, this might be close. Nice, I was really not expecting to get a fish here, guys. December, mid-December, out here bait fishing with uh, chicken liver and anchovies. Check this out, guys. Nice, this is a decent fish. Nice, here we go, here, let's bring this guy in. This is a nice striper, guys. Give this guy a measure, but I'm pretty sure he's not 20 or 18. 17 inches. All right, let's release him. All right, well, I'm gonna release this guy, but that's a little too dangerous right now to uh, get down to the water and release him nicely because the water level's so low, so I gotta have to just throw him in. Guys, so let me show you how I just caught that one. So. I have this slider on there, um, kind of like a Carolina rig because I was originally letting this sit, letting it sit, but I took the weight off. So I just got 25 pound test tied to a swivel and then eight pound test coming off as a leader. One little split shot right there and then a small red hook trailed with a even smaller little trout hook. It's kind of a janky setup. I took an anchovy and I 
thread it through once, pulled the line through, and then threaded it through again on the other side. Okay, like that. And then I just kind of threw it out and let it drift with the current, kind of like back bouncing. The current's really low. I haven't been out to the aqueduct out here in a while. And so the, uh, the flow is really low. It's not fast at all. So um, just jagged it right here underneath this bridge, you can see. I felt kind of bad, I hooked that guy right in his eye. And it was kind of hard getting the hook out of his eye. Got one. Let's go. Got one, guys. He was right where I thought he was gonna be. He was right on top of that grate. Nice, on the anchovy doing the same thing, just letting it drift down. Ooh, this one's fat. This one's definitely fatter, it's been feeding well, but probably still not 18 inches. Oh, it's so close. I kind of want to bring him over to test him. This might be 18 inches, guys. This one might be the keeper. Oh my gosh. Be the keeper that we've been waiting for. Oh my gosh. I got to bring him over to measure him. But this might be it. Let's go, guys. I have a feeling about this one. If he's Hell yeah, guys. We finally got a keeper. Let's go. Guys, I have been fishing out of this aqueduct for my entire life. I've caught catfish, I've caught stripers, but I've never caught an 18 inch striper to take home and eat. I've caught them elsewhere, but never out of here. And I know that they've been here and they're huge. Finally, today is that day. Check this out. Finally, today, I have caught an 18 inch on the dot striped bass. Now this is gonna be amazing. We're gonna take this home, put it in the air fryer. I am stoked. Had a crazy tough year of fishing for salmon this year. And this is awesome. I caught a 17 inch striper just earlier and finally brought it home with the 18 incher. Gonna take it home, put it on the air fryer. Guys, that was such a cool fish to catch because I like knew, like I could just visualize it. I just visualized exactly what was happening. Let me show you what was happening. So I walked on over here and I was drifting that anchovy right along this bank, probably about 12 to 15 feet. So this grate right here goes all the way underneath the aqueduct and I just drifted it right over there and bam, hooked up on my first keeper striped bass out of this aqueduct. So now we got this rod in there soaking and uh, this is my salmon steelhead rod. So I could hook up on a big striper with this guy, but he's soaking an anchovy and I'm gonna put another one on that other rod that I have and keep doing what I've been doing. All right guys, well I've just been chilling out here for uh, for a while now. Got a couple bites since that keeper that I caught. I haven't brought any in yet so far, but it's just uh, been a really re relaxing day out here at the aqueduct. One of the things that I really like about the aqueduct, it's not super beautiful or anything by any regard, but when you're out here and you got a nice day, it is just like really peaceful. It's pretty cool. It does have some really cool sunsets too, but it's been a great day out here so far. I'm super stoked to bring back this keeper to the air fryer. All right guys, well it's about that time. I'm gonna do one, one last cast, um, see if we can get one hook up on this last cast. And I got this uh, chicken liver that I'm throwing down. If you're a fisherman and you say last cast, that really means last five to 10 casts. All right, so I'm gonna flay this the uh, same way I would a, um, a big salmon or a steelhead. It's my favorite way to, to flay. You don't have to worry about the guts or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in right here on the uh, right by the fin, go along the uh, go along the uh, gills right here till I hit the the backbone, 
and then work my knife along the backbone, just the tip, until I get back to the tail, then I'll just poke it through and come out. Then work it back along the ribs, and you'll be good to go. So you can see now I'm just running my blade along the ribs. Yeah, my grandpa taught me this way to flay. I love it because you don't have to worry about the guts. Pop it out right there. Okay, and there you go, you got one nice filet right there. As you can see, I skimped a little bit right here near the ribs, but that's perfectly fine. Yeah, my favorite way to filet fish is just like this. My grandma taught it to me when I was like 12 years old out there in Alaska. Now I'm just gonna flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. So there's the rest of the fish. It's got all its guts still intact. Didn't have to deal with that. Some people like to cut right here underneath the cheek. There's like a little bit more meat. But this isn't a big enough fish. I'm not really worried about it. So I'm just gonna drop all this in the trash. And we could use this for dog meat, for dog food, but don't really need that right now. Okay, there you go. So I cut up the uh, fillets into some nice little pieces. And we got some flour with some salt and pepper, uh, one egg, and then some uh, breading with some Cajun, Old Bay, and lemon pepper. So, here we go. Just take a little piece, get a real light with some flour on it, dip it in the egg, just like that, and then put the breading on it. And that piece is ready to go in the air fryer. Throw my fingers in the air fryer too. Probably tastes pretty good. All right guys, so this is ready to go in the air fryer. You can hear it's uh, preheating right behind me. Once it's ready, we'll put these little nuggets right in there. Check it out guys, fresh out of the air fryer. Looking pretty good if you ask me. I don't even know what you'd call this if you're like serving this at like a restaurant or something. Woo! This is gonna be really cool because we're gonna get to compare it to the um, fried catfish that we did like a month ago. Don't have any dipping sauce, but I do have some lemon. But before I try some lemon, I wanna just try a piece with nothing but the uh, air fryer. It's pretty good, pretty mild. Uh, not a super fishy taste, very mild. I need some zing on it, not enough Cajun. Probably should have put some more Cajun in there. The lemon's gonna really help. Has a real nice crunch to it. Yeah, the lemon definitely, definitely adds a lot. But this is really good. Tracy challenge complete, catch and cook. A fish within the city limits of Tracy, California. Growing up in Tracy, California, a lot of people think there's not too much to do. I didn't even know that there was fishing in Tracy. I mean, I always started fishing down here when I was like 14, when I figured out that like you could look at Google Maps and see the California aqueduct and the Delta Mendota Canal going straight through the city. Started fishing there, didn't know anything about it. Caught some catfish, caught some stripers, and then uh, got a little bit more into fishing. And now I can get a dinner, I can get a full meal by just going out there for an hour or two and hooking up on the really nice fish. I kind of want to share this with some people. Hold that thought. Want to it? Guys, this is just too good. I'm so excited that I can't eat this by myself. So I'm gonna go over to my dad's place and share it with my dad and my brother and whoever is at the house. So I'm just too excited about this. First time caught a striped bass in the city limits, Tracy. Got my air fryer out, did it, so let's go see what they think of this fish. Why don't you buy hot chocolate at the store? Whoa! 
This is my dad's tree. Oh, that was gone like weeks ago. Is the vlog not for stuff. real? Oh. You gotta stop eating Peter brought you fish. Well, I want some too. Get that out of here. But did you Put that in there. Rose just angry, bro. That's no, my first keeper striper out there. of the aqueduct. Should I, should this was I? caught four hour, three hours ago and uh, put in the air fryer. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, totally yummy. Mm. Totally yummy. Mm -hmm. I was just eating it all by myself. And I was like, Does this it sound is like an I want to try. Does it sound like an ad yet? Totally yummy. There shouldn't be any bones. You might find like one or two. I didn't find any. I think it's delicious. That's the stuff. Okay, PCP. Palm circle P. <laughs> Pretty yummy. Mmm. It's actually really good. We should take some so you can take <laughs> them. Alright guys, well this is all that's left. Really, like, One little sliver of the striper. I thought you said like the day after Thanksgiving. That's gonna conclude the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. And actually, I checked the analytics. Only 10% of you guys that watch these videos are subscribed to my channel. So, up, let's up that to 20%. That would really help me out. So, uh, go ahead right here. Click that subscribe button. Check out all my other videos. And I'll see you next time. Alright guys.